Good morning. So um, my name is Abby Edens. I am the Director of Education at the National World War II Museum. And of course, today we are uh, live uh, from my, uh, my kitchen. Uh, so if you guys want to actually bake along with me today, uh, I'm going to go pretty slow and we're going to um, do a little bit of um, World War II ration baking. Um, now today the recipe actually comes from my grandmother, uh, my mom's mom, and uh, we have a picture of my grandmother. Uh, her name uh, was Mildred um, Hopkins Randall. And there is a lovely picture of her right there. And that is her with my Uncle Tim. And my Uncle Tim was actually born in November of 1940. So this is a, um, a 1940s photograph of my family. And my grandmother, uh, like um, you know, many women probably here on the home front, uh, did a lot of cooking and, and baking uh, during the 1940s. And uh, unfortunately, we only have a few recipes uh, from this era, from my grandmother. Um, she actually, we have four known recipes uh, from this era. And the reason why we know that it's from this era is because of what it's written on. And um, there it is right there. It is a, um, this is actually in her handwriting and my parents actually scanned this and sent it to me from Indiana from a, a cookbook my mom has of my grandmother's recipes. And it's on Clabber Girl um, uh, notepad, notepad paper. Uh, and that's what my great uncle Hubert, uh, my, my grandmother's brother, uh, he worked at Clabber Girl and uh, before World War II broke out. And so, uh, when uh, the war broke out, he actually joined the U.S. Army. And so uh, we know that this is from around that time period. And we also know because of some of the things that are in the recipe itself. And we're going to get into that here in just a minute. And there's the recipe right there. So um, my recipe right here uh, actually has a little bit more guidance uh, than my grandmother. Now, when I was a kid and went to school, uh, I remember my teachers, when you write, wrote out directions, they're like, write it for grandma. Uh, my grandma needed to write out her recipe for me because it was um, a lot of her recipes are very vague uh, and this one was the most um, had the most detail in it uh, except when it came to the spices and the spices are um, uh, a recipe that I came up with uh, for this particular cookie. So we're going to be making a sugar cookie. And um, some of the things that you're going to see, one of them is at the very top, if you want to actually bring your computer to your own kitchen or your tablet, or if you're watching this on your cell phone, go ahead and go to your kitchen if you want to bake these right now. Uh, you are more than welcome to join me in baking. Um, so you're going to need salad oil. That's vegetable oil. Uh, it made me scratch my head for a second when uh, I saw that in the recipe, but it is vegetable oil. So um, I have right here my vegetable oil. Uh, I have my Crisco right here. So that is something that you're going to need to go and, and get. Um, sugar. So you're going to need sugar in your recipe. So uh, go ahead and go get uh, about a cup of sugar. You're going to need flour, uh, spices. So if you don't have the list of spices that I, I put in there, um, cinnamon. Uh, a lot of us already keep cinnamon in the cupboard. Just go ahead and grab some cinnamon. Um, we're gonna put that in the recipe, uh, but if you have some of the others, uh, like nutmeg and cloves and ginger and allspice, go ahead and grab those. Um, and we're gonna be using those. Uh, we're also going to be using molasses today, uh, or at least I will be, uh, and I've got my bottle of molasses. Now, some of you may be like, I do not have molasses in my pantry. That is not a problem. Uh, because the one thing about World War II is that you used what you had. And so if you have honey, go ahead and grab some honey uh, out of your cabinet. And um, you can use honey. It actually makes, I, I've done this recipe, this is going to be my fourth time making this recipe. And two of the times I used honey, and it's actually my favorite thing to use for, for this particular recipe. Uh, so honey is amazing. Um, if you do not have honey, uh, you don't have you know, molasses. If you have maple syrup, uh, try using that. And so we're only going to be using about a quarter of a cup of that today. So uh, you can grab that. Uh, I actually have um, that on hand as well. Um, then the other things that you're going to need uh, is one egg. You're going to need uh, baking soda out of your cupboard. And the last thing that you're going to need is salt. Okay, so that is our basic recipe and it's really, really easy. 
Um, so we're gonna kind of get started before we even start putting ingredients into our mixer. Go to your uh, oven and you're gonna wanna turn the oven on to 375. 375 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, because when we put those cookies in there, we want the oven to be at the top temperature. We don't want to put it in when the oven's cold because that's going to take a lot longer for those cookies and they're going to kind of turn out a little different. Okay, so let us go ahead and start. And then while the cookies are baking, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about rationing. Okay, so uh, and what that was actually like during World War II and um, you know, some of the challenges folks faced on the home front when it came to baking at home. All right, so again, if you guys have uh, questions uh, in regards to rationing during World War II, I'll be uh, answering some of those questions uh, while our cookies are baking, and then also again at the very end too. So if, you know, while they're baking, you don't come up with a question right away, that's not a worry. Okay, excellent. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna need to start first with our cooking oil, um, our vegetable oil right here. And if you can go ahead and get out uh, your measuring cups, we're gonna need a half cup of our vegetable oil. So we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. This is also, uh, if you are uh, trying to teach uh, math right now at home, I know that uh, my mother and my sister have both been working with uh, my nieces on uh, working with um, fractions right now. And that's a lot of what uh, baking is, it's working with fractions. So you can definitely try this out at home and talking about fractions, how many quarter cups go into a half cup, how many half cups go into a full cup, and so on and so forth. What if you needed to, you know, cut that recipe in half? How, what does those look like? And then also, if you wanted to double the recipe, make even more cookies, how you double that recipe and what those fractions look like, okay? Um, actually, it makes kind of math for me a little bit more fun uh, when I'm actually doing the baking. So, all right, the next thing that we're gonna need is we're going to need sugar. So I'm gonna get out my cup and I'm going to go ahead and get a nice cup of sugar right here. I'm gonna add that to the oil here in my mixer. Next, we're gonna add uh, an egg. Uh, we're gonna do all the wet ingredients first. So um, I've already cracked my egg, it's right in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there. And then the other thing that we're gonna add into here is of course our molasses or our honey. I'm gonna go ahead, since it's in the original recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and use the molasses, but you all feel free to use your honey or to use your maple syrup, whatever you have on hand. And we're gonna need a quarter cup of that. So, and of course you can see this is really thick stuff. Um, very, very thick. <laughs> and it is going to take a little bit of doing here to get that out of that cup here. And hold on one minute. Spoon here ready. Scrape that right in there. All right. So with that, we now need to combine it. And so we're gonna let that mix. And that's gonna you know, take a, a minute or so to get all those ingredients mixed really well. You want the egg to be completely combined in there. Uh, and for it to look, you know, pretty, you know, that there's no lumps basically in the mixture, okay? Excellent. Awesome. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And next we're gonna do the dry ingredients. So what I like to do is I like to get a separate bowl for this, um, for all the dry ingredients. In my grandmother's original recipe, she actually talks about, you know, throwing everything in all at once. And what I have found uh, to save your kitchen uh, from a lot of cleanup is that if you throw all the ingredients in at once, there's a tendency for the flour 
to pop back up at you. And um, although I, you know, love comedy hour, I didn't necessarily want that to happen while I'm baking this recipe. So we're going to go ahead and put all the dry ingredients in a separate bowl. We're going to mix those together. And then we're going to gradually add that to the wet mixture, okay? So what we're going to need are two cups of flour. And... And I kind of shake it off a little bit. You can see kind of it's rounded here at the top. Uh, you can use a knife if you want to, to level it. I just kind of uh, just kind of do a little shake over the, the flour uh, can canister just to make sure that it's all level. So there's one cup. And there's two cups. Next, I'm gonna do the baking soda. So with the baking soda, we have two teaspoons. So I have my teaspoons over here, actually. Uh, I had a full, there's my full teaspoon right here. So we're gonna put two of these in here. And I use you know, kind of the lid up here at the top to make a level teaspoon of baking soda. So we put that in, there's one and two, and then salt is a half teaspoon. I couldn't find my half teaspoon today, so I'm gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon and I'm gonna need two of those then to make the half. So again, our fractions at work here. There we go. And now for all those spices. So again, I have a list of spices that you guys can use. Um, and so what I did was one teaspoon of cinnamon, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, a quarter teaspoon of ginger, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. I like mine a little spicy. Uh, you may only have cinnamon. If that's all you have, that's totally fine. You can put a teaspoon or two teaspoons of cinnamon in there, totally fine. Um, so uh, if you are making your cookie with honey, I suggest using just the, the, just the cinnamon and only using maybe a teaspoon, two teaspoons of cinnamon in there. Uh, it makes a really delicious cookie. It's actually one of my top cookie recipes now. Um, so I'll be making it, um, you know, probably for the holidays, probably for friends who are currently also in quarantine, staying my six feet away and leaving cookies on their doorstep. Um, so anyway, so we're going to do the one teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm going to have to actually, and of course, I don't mind if I get a little bit more cinnamon in there. So, ah. That's the oven right there telling me that it is up to temperature. So there's the teaspoon of cinnamon. Next is my cloves. And you don't wanna use a whole lot of cloves. Uh, cloves is kind of strong. And that's the reason why I'm gonna take my quarter of a teaspoon and only could put about half of that in there. Uh, to me, it's just a really strong flavor. And I, you know, I, only, I want a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, ginger. We're gonna do that whole quarter of a teaspoon of ginger in there. Okay. Next is nutmeg. So uh, I love nutmeg. Um, nutmeg and cinnamon are probably one, two of my favorites. And actually this is a brand new thing of nutmeg here. Uh, so we're gonna to have to open it. I thought I had them all open. There we go. So we're gonna put a half a teaspoon, so two, these full quarter of teaspoons in there. There's one and two, and I love the smell of nutmeg. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. And then next is gonna be our allspice. So uh, if you don't have allspice, that's totally fine. You can leave it out. Um, uh, I just have like having the little extra and we're gonna put a quarter of a teaspoon in there. Now I'm gonna take my whisk here. I've got a whisk that I'm gonna just go ahead and Mix those ingredients really well. If you do not have a whisk, go ahead and just use uh, a fork. You can use that to combine all the ingredients. That way it's consistently all through. Uh, you're spreading all the ingredients through that flour mixture. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start adding just a little bit. About a third at a time and we're gonna get this mixture consistent so that way again you're not going to end up with flour all over yourselves you do not want to do that so uh we're right now um that looks like it's combining you just need to watch it and a little bit more here
And the other thing that you're going to notice, of course, this is going to be more of like a molasses cookie. Uh, even though it said sugar cookie, um, the moment I read molasses, I was like, okay, this is what we're working with. Now, with the, the honey cookie, it's going to taste a little bit more like a, a sugar cookie. So if you're using that honey, um, it's really quite a, a delicious uh, version. And as you start adding uh, in here with the recipe, uh, you can hear my, my mixer maybe knocking around a little bit. And that's because the more flour that we're going to be adding, um, the stiffer the, the dough is going to be. And it's going to start looking maybe a little bit more crumbly than actually coming together like a, a more liquid kind of dough is going to you know, look like. And I'll show you here once we get all of the flour in. Whoops. There we go. And we're almost done. We got that last little bit of flour in. Pretty good. Use my fingers here. I did wash my hands beforehand, y'all. So uh, we are dealing with a very sanitary kitchen. Just an FYI, I am. I did have clean hands. Uh, so the next thing that we are going to do. This is what that dough looks like. So you can see it's very crumbly, uh, and that's normal. I've made this now. This is the fourth time, and that's what the dough looks like every single time. So do not worry if that's what it looks like to you. You're going to want a baking sheet, and I put um, some um, uh, parchment paper on here, cut it to the size of the, of the pan itself. If you do not have parchment paper, that's fine. I've actually used aluminum foil and sprayed it with baking spray before. That way it makes it an easier cleanup uh, on the pan itself, so you don't have cookies adhering to the pan every time. Um, so uh, I use parchment paper, but again, if you've got aluminum foil, or if you want to use the straight up pan, you totally can do that as well. Uh, just follow the instructions for your pan if it's a nonstick and all that. So the other thing you're going to need for the actual uh, putting the cookies on the sheet is a small bowl for a little bit more sugar. And, and a glass. This is what we're going to use to press down our cookies. This is what my grandmother used. When she was making these sugar cookies, my mom specifically remembers in the 1950s uh, and 60s when she was growing up, uh, that um, she remembers specifically her mother using the glass to press down the cookies, and then also when the cookies came warm out of the oven. Um, so just FYI, so we're gonna be using that glass too. Now, how much sugar do you need? I'm only gonna use about two tablespoons, and we'll go from there. So if we need a little bit more, we can. But I'm trying to stick with uh, World War II rations here at the time. So, um, and, um, so we're only gonna use two tablespoons. So get your hands into the dough and you're gonna kind of mush the dough together in your hands. And you're gonna cr roughly create almost, you know, slightly smaller than a golf ball sized piece of dough, okay? And then you're going to put it in the sugar and you're gonna roll it around in the sugar. There we go. And then put it on your baking pan like that. And just, uh, we're going to do four rows, three cookies in each row. And each cookie needs to be about two inches away from each other because as the cookies are gonna bake, they're gonna spread out and you don't want your cookies running into each other. Um, it makes a bit of a mess. Um, it might be a good excuse if you wanted to actually have um, two cookies and, you know, like, darn it, your, your cookies actually, you know, ran together, so therefore you need to eat two cookies. I get it. Um, so definitely you can do that uh, in that way. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the rest of these cookies on here. And it's roughly going to make about um, a dozen and a half cookies, so about 18 cookies. Uh, if you make them smaller, uh, it is going to make close to two dozen cookies. Um, each time I've made it, it's roughly made about 18 uh, because I like having a nice sized cookie. Um, I don't know, uh, it just, it makes me feel better uh, to have, you know, a larger cookie. I don't know, maybe it's just about portion size and today, who knows. Uh, but to me, it's, 
it's really, um, um, it's kind of a comfort food type of thing, I think. So during, um, during World War II, um, you know, this would have been something special that you would have made. Uh, this is not an everyday activity that you would have done uh, is make cookies. Um, and that is primarily because of rations, which we'll get into just here in a second. So um, I want you to you know, kind of think about what does rationing mean? Uh, what kind of things do you think were rationed during World War II? You know, these are some things to think about. Uh, and, you know, some of those ingredients will give you some clues here on exactly what you think might have been rationed. Um, you know, what are some curious ingredients that we were using at this time? You know, things that you, you if you've made cookies before, you're like, hey, I've never used this ingredient before in order to make cookies. What are those ingredients? Um, you know, again, I, uh, you know, and I'll, yeah, spoiler alert, I will say that, you know, uh, one of them uh, for me was the, the oil. <laughs> I was like, I'm not using butter. Why am I not using butter? Um, and so those were uh, some questions I had when it came to um, making these cookies and experimenting with these recipes. Um, oh, for the person who actually thinks I should have my own show on uh, uh, with cooking, thank you so much. <laughs> I love to bake. Um, I've been baking actually since I was a kid. Uh, I was a 4-H'er, uh, so I was not a Girl Scout. I always wanted to be a Girl Scout, uh, but my older sister was a 4-H'er, and so we were all 4-H'ers. And uh, one of the things we took every year to the fair, uh, one of the areas was foods. And so I would actually, I think the first year were cookies. Uh, second year, I think, was muffins. Uh, third year was breads. I mean, seriously, I loved to bake. And um, so my mother, uh, she always baked cakes. She always, um, her buttercream frosting is to die for. Um, I seriously, it's, it's one of my all-time favorite things is my mother's cakes uh, and her buttercream frosting. The other thing too is um, my father uh, also baked. Uh, he is the pie maker in the family. And it is his pies, especially his rhubarb pie, phenomenal. So I grew up just watching them baking and it was fantastic. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna raise up oops, uh, our lovely cookies. I'm going to lower this so you can see here a little bit. I apologize for any uh, problem uh, with the I just caused for anyone uh, watching. So we are going to take the, the glass and push it down. So what you have here is a cookie that's roughly about, I'd say a half inch thick. And then you're gonna to continue to do that, pressing down with those two inches. So I'm gonna lift this up again so we can see each other again, hello. And so we're gonna go ahead and press down the rest of those cookies onto the pan. And again, make sure that it's two inches apart. You, again, <laughs> these things will spread. Because I don't want you thinking that, you know, these, uh, these cookies are going to remain this small. They are not going to remain this small, y'all. Uh, they are going to really um, become a nice size cookie. All right, so we have all 12 of our cookies here. Uh, I have an additional uh, uh, half a dozen probably still in here, which I will make after we are done today, uh, finish making these. And we're going to go ahead and put them in the oven. You're gonna to wanna to set your timer for eight minutes, uh, just in case your, um, your oven runs hot. Uh, my oven seems to run a little cooler, so it takes about 10 minutes for these cookies to bake total for me, but start checking around eight minutes, and then if it's looking really brown around the edges, go ahead and pull them out. Uh, mine, I know, is gonna be 10 minutes, so I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. There we go. And we're gonna talk a little bit about rationing while this is happening. And hold on a minute, I've gotta wash my hands here a minute. Um, Cause my hands are sticky from dough and you may need to do the same as well. Just did a quick rinse. All right. So why exactly did we ration uh, during World War II? And what kind of things did we ration? And um, when we are really looking at, you know, the rations here, um, 
you know, was molasses rationed? This was a question that just came up. Uh, molasses, uh, molasses, I'm not for sure if molasses was really rationed at this time. Um, that is a very good question. I'm gonna have to definitely check on that. And what was uh, most common sugar substitute? Um, that is also a good question. Uh, so sugar could be substituted for a lot of things. Um, you know, what was the most common? I'm not for sure. Honey would definitely be it. Um, you know, again, you have your corn syrups. Um, that's also around. Uh, you have your, um, you have brown sugar that's readily available at this time as well. Um, so you could use brown sugar. Uh, so it's what you had on hand. Um, I know for my great grandparents on my other side, uh, I recently found out that they had, uh, during World War II, they had uh, beehives. And so they had honey readily available. They were farmers. And so my great grandmother, Amelia, would actually uh, can. She would bottle up the honey and she would put a piece of honeycomb in it. And this is something that my great, well, um, that my uncle uh, Lee, not my great uncle, my uncle Lee, he was a kid during this time and that's something that he remembers uh, specifically. So those were some na uh, natural sweeteners or some uh, manufactured sweeteners that would be utilized. Some other things too that people used uh, during this time uh, for rationing um, and specifically to make things sweet. So we're working with cookies today. We have a, a cup of sugar and we have, you know, the molasses for the honey. Uh, but if you were making a pie, and a fruit pie, specifically a fruit pie that has a tart berry in it um, or tart fruit in it, you would want something to sweeten it up, but you might not be able to use all the sugar that you have on hand uh, because again, it's rationed. So you would want to use something um, that was naturally sweet you can put in it. And so sometimes that was an, another fruit, like an apple. So you would slice it up, you know, you peel it, core it and slice it up and you would put that in with the other fruit and that would help to naturally sweeten the pie that you would be making. So those were all things that you would use. Um, would it have been, would a cookie recipe like this been expensive at the time? This would have been a special treat. And the reason why is because sugar was rationed. It started getting rationed actually around 1942. I think it was May of 1942. So when you think about when Pearl Harbor happened uh, in December of 41, and then by May, by that spring of 42, is when sugar, the, one of the first grocery items to be rationed at this time, actually gets rationed. And so sugar consumption, I looked this up, uh, sugar consumption before World War II was actually about four pounds of sugar. Uh, we're looking at a month. Um, and that's a bag of sugar. Um, normal bag of sugar that you get from the grocery store is four pounds. So in four weeks, you know, like in a month, that's a pound of sugar um, a week. So I was curious, I was like, okay, so exactly what does, when things get rationed, it's about half that. So you're looking at two pounds of sugar a month that gets, ends up getting rationed. Um, so we're cutting sugar consumption. So a sugar, if you look at a sugar cookie recipe today, you're looking at about a cup and a half to two cups of sugar in a cookie recipe today for today's audience, for our palate, it's relatively sweet. But if you are looking at uh, sugar, uh, during um, what a ration bit of sugar looks like. I've got a small um, container right here, and it's a Ziploc container, and it holds two weeks of sugar ration. This is a, a, this is a pound of sugar right here. So half of that, which is about the cup that we used for this recipe, is one week ration of sugar. Just in this recipe, one week, sugar res uh, one week of sugar ration is in this recipe. So just that extra smidge of, of two tablespoons probably made that full pound. So when you think about it, that, that is actually, um, you know, this is not a recipe that you would have made for your family every night. It's not a recipe that you would sit down and eat four cookies uh, right away, uh, which is tempting, especially with those honey cookies, y'all. Um, but you would definitely, um, you would definitely, you know, this would be something special. Um, the other things, you know, when we're thinking about rationing during this time too, is that, you know, there were other things that were rationed. Um, and if you have a chance, um, my colleague, Kim Geis, actually did a fabulous talk uh, this week that was all about rations and ration books. And you can actually find that on our YouTube channel. Uh, so I, I, if you want to find out more in depth on, on ration books, how people actually went out and purchased uh, some of these uh, really well-needed, um, you know, ingredients that people were used to getting all the time and now they had to basically 
uh, ration, you know, what did that look like? How did they do it? Uh, was there confusion? Because it was a confusing process and me listening to it, I was like, wow, she made, it, Kim made it sound a lot easier than if I had actually picked up the book and tried to you know, figure it out. Um, so definitely check that out because uh, it's really fascinating. But the second thing that was actually uh, rationed, um, I believe food wise, um, which would have really been painful for me, is my coffee. Um, if any of you are coffee lovers like I am, um, this is the, the next thing that got rationed. This was in November of 42. And uh, I am a big coffee lover. And so uh, this is a uh, coffee and chicory. And I believe chicory actually helped to stretch out the coffee a little bit more um, so that, you know, you can make your, your coffee supply last a little longer. Um, so I have this on hand. Uh, this is something I'm never without. I usually have a cup or two, and I actually have one sitting over here to enjoy with cookies after they're done baking. Um, the other thing too is um, we noticed that there was salad oil uh, or vegetable oil that was used in this recipe. So the other thing um, that was rationed at this time was butter. And um, I, I went online, I was just curious about butter itself and how, how much butter uh, did we use uh, before the war? How much butter were we using during the war? And um, so one thing that I did find, and I'm gonna double check on this as well, but that uh, around the 1930s, you know, normal consumption, basically about 17 pounds of butter. Uh, and that during, you know, around 1943, that this actually dropped to around 11 pounds of butter. Now you may be thinking, <laughs> 11 pounds of butter, that's an awful lot of butter. Um, this right here is a pound of butter. That is uh, four half cup sticks of butter. And considering we just used a half cup of salad oil, so half cup of, so one of those sticks would go into the ear. Um, but on average, and I, I love to bake cakes. You can ask any of one of my coworkers, I love to bake. Um, I can use one of these packages for one cake. Uh, a double layer cake with buttercream frosting takes a full pound of butter. So um, this was not something in, in you know, that, um, you know, when you really think about it today, this is something that, um, you know, we kind of take for granted. And during this time, you know, uh, people were really trying to be more resourceful in uh, what they were using. Um, some of the other things too, just to be, you know, um, aware of, you know, again, there were ration books uh, that people here in the United States were given in order to purchase uh, these items. So, you know, some of your dry goods, uh, your sugar, your coffee, um, you would also have meat and cheese and, and, uh, and butter. These were all things that were rationed and there were different colored stamps for different types of items. They were also numbered uh, because they were given points and those points could change over time. Again, check out that uh, wonderful talk by Kim uh, because she goes in depth in, into this, it's amazing. Um, but just because you had a stamp and you had your ration book did not mean you automatically got that uh, particular ingredient you were looking for when you got to the store. So it was upon availability as well. And so when you went to you know, go use the stamp for your sugar, you would also have to have money available too. You had to have your ration book and your stamp and you had to have your money available because just because you had a stamp, you still had to pay for the item, okay? Um, and you were limited. And the reason why we did this is a lot of what we're finding today. When we go to the grocery store today um, is that a lot of these items are not readily available when we get there. It took me three grocery shopping trips in one hour, three different stops to find flour a five pound bag of flour. Um, and so a lot of this was to, in order to be able to uh, make sure that things were more readily available to stop, you know, more, you know, a hoarding tendency that, you know, when you start hearing that you're not gonna have ready access to some things that you need, it causes a panic. And so people rush to the store to get what they need. And then sometimes that leaves you without something. It takes a while to get that product back. And that happens to be right here, the cookies ready to come out. Um, and there they are, and they look perfect. They look absolutely perfect. There we go. So we're going to let them sit. You're going to be very tempted to get them off the, the, the baking sheet right away. 
uh, don't do it. <laughs> they need to firm up on the cookie sheet, just like another minute or two. So that gives us another minute or two to talk a little bit more about rationing. And then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, sign off and then we can definitely have cookies, okay? So just give it another minute or two, let them kind of cool. I will move mine to a, a, a lovely baking rack that I have right over here next to my mixer. Uh, that way they can cool the rest of the way. Um, so um, again, you know, you had to have your ration book with you. And so men, women, and children all had ration books. Um, and so that was, you know, something that you wanted to keep safe. It was very valuable. Uh, that you would have. All right. And then, um, you know, the other thing too, the other reason why we rationed, it wasn't just for here on the home front. So it was also seen as a patriotic duty um, for us to ration here at home. And the reason why is because we had uh, servicemen and women who were serving here at home and abroad. And um, we wanted to make sure that they had the food and the resources that they needed in order to fight World War II. And um, so rationing was actually seen as that patriotic duty. Um, so again, um, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of propaganda posters. There's some fabulous ones. And again, uh, Kim uses that in her lovely talk. You'll see a few of them. And um, they definitely push home, um, you know, that uh, you can contribute to the war effort just through what you do in your everyday life, even right here in the kitchen. Do we have some other questions uh, in regards to rationing? Um, can you use cane syrup um, is uh, a question that Tara asked. And yes, uh, you can definitely use that. Um, Hunter asked the same thing about brown sugar. Can you use brown sugar instead of white sugar? Of course you can. Uh, so if you don't have brown, if you don't have you know, granulated sugar, uh, definitely use brown sugar. I love brown sugar. Um, and sometimes you can do a half and half. So if you have a little bit of one and a little bit of the other, do half and half. Uh, equal amount is what you would use, okay? Um, what did my grandma say that she missed the most food-wise during the war years and rationing? You know, I wish I could ask her. Uh, my my great-grandma, uh, Mildred, uh, actually, uh, she passed before I was born. Uh, she passed actually before my parents got married. Um, so I'm not able to ask her those questions. Um, um, so I wish I could. Uh, it would have made things really, really, you know, interesting. Um, my other grandma, she passed eight years ago. And if I had thought about asking her at that time uh, before then, uh, I wish I had. Uh, these are a lot of those woulda, coulda, should I wish I would have asked. I wish I would have, you know, wrote down these things. What I am doing now, and this is something you all can do at home, uh, is that uh, for family members uh, who were kids uh, during World War II, or you may be lucky to have a relative who was an adult during World War II to be able to ask, um, you know, ask them these things um, or, or have them think about it for a little bit um, and maybe write it down, uh, some of the things that they remember. Uh, I'm finding that my uh, Eden side of the family, my dad's side, um, their recipes were a bit different and uh, they were farmers during uh, World War II. And so what they grew up eating and making uh, was a bit different um, than necessarily my mom's side of the family. And uh, like my grandmother, Randall, uh, my mom's mom, uh, she worked at Camp Atterbury uh, during World War II. And that's actually where she met my grandfather um, uh, is at uh, Camp Atterbury. They carpooled together. So they were both divorcees. Uh, and uh, that's how they met, and um, yeah, so uh, definitely uh, you can learn a lot about your family history and the people, uh, you know, what daily life was just by, you know, what they ate, what they cooked, uh, and how they talk about it, and so um, I'm learning a lot just even right now talking to my uncle Lee, my, my dad's brother, and also my dad who uh, was born in 1945, um, and what they, what they ate. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's see, um, how does, uh, I have Sierra here that uh, is asking, how does this relate to our situation today? Of course, a lot of the situation today, um, you know, uh, we run into a lot of things that were, um, you know, at the stores that we, we just don't have readily available. Um, the sugar, uh, I've actually found I can find sugar. I just can't find flour. Uh, yeast, uh, baking yeast is another thing. 
uh, a lot of my coworkers, they've also said, hey, do you have any baking yeast? And that's used for making breads. Uh, so I think a lot of people are home right now and they're like, you know what? May not have bread readily available. I better be baking bread. Um, so it's really interesting, you know, some of the items that people are using. So uh, we're going to scoop off one of these cookies here, or maybe two. Um, and I'm going to get out one of my plates here. So ladies and gentlemen, these right here are the lovely, warm, uh, fantastic cookies that you have to eat today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the baking instruction today. If you have any questions about rationing, please feel free to, you know, um, check out our website. The other thing too is if that you're wanting to try some recipes but you don't have any at home, um, one, you can check out our website, um, our Facebook page. Um, I've got Baking on Rations. I'm doing that every week. Uh, so you can try out one of my family's recipes uh, and maybe some other family recipes uh, from other folks that I know uh, that'll be coming down the pike. And also our museum gift shop. Uh, you can go online. We actually have World War II recipe cookbooks uh, that you can also purchase and have delivered safely to your door, uh, and you can be baking at home. So again, thank you all so much. Um, let's see, uh, one more question, maybe we'll, the last question. Let's see, uh, how did I know the cookies are under or overdone? So um, you will notice a, you know, around the edges, it'll start getting a little brown. Around 10 minutes should be about the amount of time, Noah, um, in order to uh, know if the cookies are done or not. Um, also, they're going to be a little soft when you get them out of the oven uh, on the cookie sheet. That's why you need to let them sit on the cookie sheet for about, you know, three to five minutes on the cookie sheet. And then you're going to move them to the um, uh, to a rack or you can just leave them on the cookie sheet for about 10 minutes and then they're going to be ready. But they shouldn't uh, fall apart in your hand when you're holding them up like I am right now, um, they should be a little firm, okay? All right, excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking with you all, and I hope you all stay safe, and I'll see you next time.